G'day, I'm Yuki San Dev, and in part 7 of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be looking at changing a shape's transform properties in script. Alright, so today we're going to make a shape move, rotate and grow with script. We will have a new variable type. We will be introduced to time.delta time and local variables, and we will start using vector three. So let's get going. All right, so remember the transform properties in the inspector for our primitive shapes. Well, today we are gonna manipulate and change those properties with translate, rotate, and local scale in a script. So first off, let's get a shape set up to work with. I'm going to use a cube because it's a little easier to, to see it rotate than a sphere. Uh, so right click in your hierarchy and create a cube. Reset its transform properties. Uh, also use the constraint tool to lock XYZ of scale and change the scale to 0 0.5. Uh, we're just halving its size basically. If you can't see the cube in your game screen, you might need to reset your camera's transform and then drag the camera back and up a bit. Right, so with the cube selected, you can see its transform properties. These are what we can change with a script during runtime. So let's create a folder in our project for scripts. Now right click the scripts folder and select create C sharp script. I'm going to call mine controller. Now drag that script up and onto the cube. Dragging it onto the cube because that's the object that we want the script to move. Click the cube and make sure the script is attached and we are ready to start moving this cube around. Double click the controller script to open it in your editor. So inside your start method, type in transform dot translate bracket zero comma zero comma one in bracket semicolon. Now, if you are using Visual Studio, it's going to make suggestions the whole time you are typing. It's uh, awfully distracting, I know, but just ignore it for now. Also, be careful not to use the transform with a capital T. Uh, we want the one with the small t. So let's rip apart this piece of code for a second. So transform is the component we are accessing. Remember in the inspector, it's called transform. Uh, don't get the wrong idea here, though. Uh, you can't just simply type in the name of any component in the inspector and change things. Uh, but for transform, you can. Translate in plain English, well, let's just say it means move. Translate is a method and requires parameters, which are these. And in case you didn't already guess, they are the coordinates for X, Y, and Z. So in this case, we are telling the program to move this cube one unit or meter on the Z axis, which works out to be forward. And then we also have, of course, transform.rotate and transform.localScale. Uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. So control S to save and you can minimize it. Now click on the cube and keep an eye on the Z in the inspector and run. So Z changed to one and the cube moves one meter forward. Now, of course it only moves once because we have this code in the start method. Now double click your script to open it or maximize it and drag that code into the update method. Control S to save and minimize and run again. And the cube shoots off like a bullet. Click on the cube in your hierarchy while it's still running and look at the Z position increasing constantly. Okay, so we've got basic movement, but it's a little too fast. So let's get back into the script. So it's going way too fast because it's running that code once per frame and with a pretty fast frame rate, that's just gonna be too quick. So let's add something to slow it down. Straight after the coordinates in the code, add asterisk space time dot delta time. So what does the asterisk mean? Well, in code, it just means multiply. If you've used a calculator on a computer, you're probably already familiar with it. And what is time dot delta time? Well, that's seconds, essentially. So now rather than each frame, it's more like each second, it's gonna travel one meter. It's multiplying one, in this case, by time. It would run something like this. 
Time is green because it's a class. If you are feeling adventurous, you can hold control key down and click time to see what's in the class. Right, save your script, minimize and run. Well, that's a lot better now, but how do I speed it up or slow it down? So let's stop that and go back into your script again. Now, after delta time, add another space and another asterisk and a space and a five. Save and run. Way better. So that cube now is moving forward at around five meters per second, roughly. So we have basic movement still, but we need to make this code a little simpler and a little more versatile. So double click your script to open it again. So first of all, let's add a variable for the speed. Um, having five just hard coded in there is not very bright. Uh, if there were multiple moving lines in there and I needed to change their speeds, I would have to go and change each one individually. And in a script, it might be hundreds of lines long. It would drive me insane just trying to find them. So underneath the curly brackets in our class, type in public float speed equals five, semicolon. So unlike the previous video, this number is a float, so it can contain decimals. Uh, now also replace the five in the transform code to the speed variable. So the coordinate values of 0, 0, 1 are great if you wanted to be very specific to place something or somewhere to move something to, but we are just simply moving in a certain direction, so there is an easier way. In our line of code, replace the 0, 0, 001 with vector3.forward. So now your code should look something like this. This code does exactly as it did before. If you hover over the word forward, it actually tells you that it is shorthand for 0, 0, 001. Well, you might ask, can I use back, left, right, up, down, words too then? Yeah, you can. They're all in there. Control S to save and minimize. So click on the cube and you can see the speed variable and its value in the inspector because we made it public in the script. So now you can change the speed without having to open the script each time. So let's change it to one and run. So while it's running, uh, left click on the speed variable to alter its speed while it runs. You can drag it left and right to change the numbers. Uh, you drag it backwards and you can watch the cube go in reverse. All right, so that's the basics of moving with transform. So now real quick, let's run through rotate and scale. Uh, used in much the same way, let's try rotate. So let's get back in your script again. Rim out your move script line and make a new line with transform dot rotate vector three dot up times time dot delta time times speed. Now, since speed for movement is going to be a little bit too slow for rotation, let's make a new variable for rotation. So create a new public float and call it rotation speed and give it the default value of 20. Now change the name in your rotate line to use rotation speed rather than speed. Save and minimize and play. Cool, we have rotation. And we can see that new public variable in the inspector so we can change its value. Now in our line of code, we said rotate up. So why is it turning sideways? Well, up refers to the Y axis, right? In rotation, the Y axis turns the object sideways. If you look at the cube properties while it runs, Y value is changing. It takes a little to get your head around, but you will pick it up. Here's a challenge for you. Go back into your script and unrem your movement code so that rotation and movement will both happen in the script. Then save and run the program. Doing something a little weird, right? It's not moving in a straight line. One might expect or hope the cube to go in a straight line and just rotate on itself. Let's see if you can figure out why the cube is moving in a circular motion. I'll give you a few seconds or pause the video to think about it. All right, we're back. So the reason for this is the cube moves 
forward from the position and rotation that it's currently in, right? So the program is following code line by line and then repeats. So the cube first moves forward a little, then it rotates a little. Then the code repeats and moves it forward again and so on. Only each time the cube is moved forward, it's now facing slightly on an angle. So when it moves forward, it moves in the direction it's facing, which is slightly rotated. So thus it moves in a circle. If you look in the inspector while it's running, the Z for position is changing and the rotation Y is changing, as you would expect, but you will also see the X in position is changing because of the rotation and movement. There are ways to have the cube spin on its own axis and still have it move in a straight line, which I, uh, we will get to in another video. Okay, so the last one is scale. Scale code is a little different, so let's get back into your script. Rem out your other code and make a new line and type transform dot local scale equals new vector three bracket one comma one comma one in bracket semicolon. Well, this code isn't going to work very well if you wanted the cube to grow over time because each time it runs, it's going to set the size to one. So it will never get any bigger. In order to make it grow, you would have to increase the number. So we can do this simply by adding a plus before the equals in the line. This is now going to add to itself each time it's cycled. So that's great, but if the game is running at 30 or more frames per second, then it's going to get ridiculously big, ridiculously fast. So we have to reduce the numbers significantly. So let's try changing the ones to 0 0.001 if. and save. Why the Fs after the numbers? Uh, because they are float values with a decimal. Whenever you use a decimal in code, you need to put the F after it. Uh, notice up here there is no F, even though it's a float variable. That's because the default values happen to be whole numbers. All right, let's save and run this code. Cool, it's growing at a reasonable rate. So another way you could do this is to make use of the variable delta time again. Let's go back into your script. So let's make a local float variable above your scale code. Let's do float cube size equals time dot delta time. And then replace all the numbers with cube size. What's a local variable? Uh, local just means that the variable can only be accessed from within the method that it's declared in, which in this case happens to be the update method. If I was to try and access or refer to this variable now from outside of update, then I would just get an error. And the reason we're using the local variable in this case is because we're using time.delta time, which needs to be called from within a method. Okay, so let's save this and run. Looks good. So that's increasing the size by about one per second. Now, if you wanted to make it even slower, you could edit the variable cube size and divide time.delta time by an amount. Uh, we could divide it by two to make it grow by about 0.5 per second. We could divide it by four to grow it at 0.25 per second and so on. You get the idea. Uh, I'm gonna try divided by four. Save and run. Cool. Here's a little test for yourself. Um, go back in your script and replace the division number four with a new public variable so that you can alter the speed in the inspector. So there are other ways you can slow things down with things like iron numerator and wait for seconds, which we will get to later on in the series. Okay, so that's about it for basic transforms. Now, just one small thing to show here. If you are using Visual Studio, then on a new line, type in transform.translate and then after you hit the first bracket you will see a pop-up with six possible parameter layouts that you could use depending on what you wanted to do. You will see contextual menus like this pop up all over the place and they can be pretty helpful if you forget the parameter syntax for something or if you want to try something new. Now I was going to throw in input uh, in this video to control movement with your keyboard, but I'm trying to keep these videos in the kind of bite-sized pieces around 15 to 20 minutes long, 
Um, I think if I put input in there, it's going to make it too long. So I think we've got enough here to play with and get accustomed to. So let's have a look at what we've covered today. So we have covered transform.translate for movement and transform.rotate for rotation and transform.localScale for scaling. Also used a new variable type float. Uh, we also use time.delta time to slow things down. We're going to be using that a lot. Uh, we used a local variable in our update method. And we used some operators to change variables and statements. So in the next video, uh, I think we're going to go through input and couple it with these movements to make the cube go forward, backward, left, right, up, down, grow, shrink, all that stuff. So I hope to see you in the next video.